We begin with hundreds of thousands of people in Toledo, Ohio, without water now for a second day. They're having to live without the most basic necessities, limited showers, no washing dishes. You can see right there lines of people forming, waiting to get their hands on a limited supply of bottled water. Public water fountains off limits, shrouded in plastic because they're unsafe to use. The National Guard on the scene filling giant tankers with fresh water to give away. ABC's Lindsay Janice is in Toledo covering it all for us tonight. On day two of Toledo's water crisis, it's all hands on deck. Volunteers passing out cases and cases of free water. Keep going in nice and tight. Okay, yes, Members of a high school football team lending a hand too. You're using your football muscles to get <laughs> cases of water into people's cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Workout. Workout for the, day. <laughs> the National Guard helping people fill up containers with as much water as they can carry. The governor of Ohio and the mayor of Toledo saying new tests on the water show improvement, but they're not ready to lift the ban. Toledo's water supply contaminated because of this algae bloom in Lake Erie, so large it can be seen from space. The bloom turning the lake a shade of green is caused by runoff from farms and livestock pens and can produce toxins called microcystins that get into the water supply. Too much and they can cause liver and nervous system damage. Families with young children finding it hardest to cope. Suzette Moore told us how she's taking care of her grandchildren. How are you actually preparing meals and feeding the family? Um, basically, we uh, right now I'm grilling on the porch here on my grill. Um, brushing teeth, we use one bottle of water, everybody. We share it till we use it up and then we're trying to use it sparingly because we don't know how long this is going to be for and again the mayor saying he needs to see more test results on that water before he'll consider lifting a ban for now nearly half a million people go into the work week without being able to drink water from their taps and businesses are expected to remain closed cecilia all right hi again class um we're back with science with mr b and what's your name there's a science guy yep <laughs> Um, and we are going to be talking today about a very big word that we probably haven't heard of before and that is called eutrophication and the video that you just saw um, was kind of discussing a way that this kind of term that we probably haven't heard of before actually affect, affected us and still affects us nearly every summer here living in the Toledo area um, where we depend on Lake Erie to provide us with water. And one thing that is going to be a problem is this thing called algae. Now we have learned before um, that plant life that does exist in um, lakes and ponds and what is required for that is going to be sunlight. Sunlight is required for plant life to exist and that sunlight has to hit them. So if we have plants that are the bottom of a, of a lake or a pond, um, that sunlight would still be able to penetrate down and hit the leaves of the plants and actually be able to uh, create photosynthesis and have that plant life um, still grow and exist and provide to the food web that is in that area. Now lakes it's a little bit harder for this to happen because if they're too deep then the light cannot get deep enough to get all the way to the surface. Um, but you're going to see this a lot with ponds. Ponds are going to be much more shallower, uh, much shallower I should say, and they are going to be able to have plant life at the bottom of the of the pond and for photosynthesis to occur. Now what is important though with photosynthesis occurring is not just for food but for oxygen as well. We learned before that through photosynthesis you actually create oxygen comes out of the stomata of the leaves and that provides oxygen to things like all the fish and all the other animals that might be existing in the pond. So it is dependent on two things, food for the animals as well as oxygen for those animals. Now where this process can get a little um, problematic is when you have things like algae or algal growth that's happening on the surface. So what we've got here and what I would like you to open up to is the quick lab called How Can Algal Growth Affect Pond Life? So I'd like you to open that now. And if you um, don't have that already open, hit the pause button and open that up and we will be right here to get started.
All right, so what Logan and I are going to demonstrate, and this goes right along with your lab paper, is what is happening during this process called eutrophication. Um, so what I want us to think of is that we've got plant life down at the bottom of a pond. Now, Logan, what's at the bottom of this little beaker here? A leaf. A leaf. Um, so then it's maybe a little hard to tell, but I got a little leaf down here at the bottom. And what we have is we're gonna have this flashlight, which is gonna represent the sun for us. Now, Logan, if I hold this up here, and I put this on top, can you see the light coming through at the bottom? Uh-huh, and so you, the top. And the top, but you can see that, and does that plant, does that leaf get light on top of it? Is the light, is the leaf lit up? No. Is it lit up now? Yes. Yes, so it's actually getting light. And so what we have is a healthy pond. We're gonna have light that's able to hit the bottom of the pond and it's gonna be able to uh, perform photosynthesis. Now, what can happen though, is we have this thing called runoff, which we've discussed before, and that's when water's gonna hit the surface, but it's not gonna be absorbed into the ground. And it's gonna run off on the surface until it hits its drainage point, which we talked about in our last lesson. Now, if that drainage point is a pond or a lake, for example, like Lake Erie, that runoff can run off into the lake. And when we think of things that could be bad for runoff, we wanna think of things like um, nitrogen, phosphorus, things that plants can actually benefit from and start to grow at a ra more rapid rate. So if we have things like fertilizers and things like that on in farmland, that can hit, stay on the surface and run off towards the lake. And then things like algae are gonna start to grow at a rapid rate. Now, the problem with algae is that yes, it's plant life, but it does not go at the bottom of the lake. And what it does is it sits on top of the lake um, and it goes on the surface of it. So what we've got here is we've got little, um, little hole punches here uh, that are green, and that's gonna represent our uh, algae. So what I'm gonna have Logan do is, Logan, held at your hand, and you're gonna put the green hole punches, just put, just sprinkle them on top of the water, okay? Okay. So. All right. So runoff is gonna cause this algae to stay on top of the pond. Now, Logan, I'm gonna hold this, and what I want, I'm gonna bring this over to the camera so that we can see. Dad, wait. Did so what I want us to see. Dad. Is that this algae is sitting on top of the water. Dad. Want some more? Yeah. So since it's sitting on top of the water, it's gonna continue to absorb all the sunlight that hits it. So if we look at this now, Logan, and we're gonna take a break, I'm gonna have you identify something for me. Now, Logan, look at the bottom here. Can you see as much light at the bottom? Look down here. Yeah. Can you see as much light at the bottom as you did before? No. No, you can't. So what's happening here is that the algae that's sitting on top of the pond or the lake is going to start to block out all of that light hitting the bottom of the pond or the lake. What that means is that only at the surface are you gonna have actually photosynthesis occurring. But that oxygen is just gonna leave off into the atmosphere. It's not gonna stay in the pond. Yeah. So why that's a big issue is that as the plants will die at the bottom, their, uh, their remains will sit at the bottom. Now the fish and the other animals that are in the pond as well will start to use up all the oxygen that's available and they will start to die as well, as well as there not being a lot of food source. So we've taken, and that what will happen here is that we're gonna take out a member of the food web that's in our pond. Um, and once we take out the plants, the other animals will start to die after that and they're gonna to start to pile up at the bottom of the lake as the algae starts to build up on the surface of the lake. And eventually, through this process of eutrophication, it will actually destroy the entire pond until there's really no pond left over. And we may end up with like a meadow after this um, or a grassy area, but the pond itself will have been destroyed 
through this process. Now, where we could see this in the real world would be like Lake Erie, for example. Now, the benefit of Lake Erie is that it's a very large lake. So this process of it actually killing the lake or destroying the lake is, pro is not probable. Um, but what we can have happen is these things called al algae blooms, where we've got a lot of algae that starts to develop. And where we have this develop is back at Maumee Bay again. The bay will become, um, turn this the water will turn like this greenish color and it will be not healthy to drink and we can actually see this on satellite images where we have the green um, algae that you can see um, from above covering the lake and this will infect our water supply and this will not be good for us to drink and back in 2014 we actually were not able to drink the water at all we were not able to cook we were not able to shower um, and this was all because of what's happening with the algae bloom this goes back to our other one our other lesson where we talked about how the importance of runoff and when we have when we're not paying attention to the amount of pollution and other ingredients that are going into the runoff then these big problems start to happen and it can start to infect and pollute our water supplies. So if we look at our, um, our lab paper, it says describe the amount of the pond surface covered by algae. Um, in this case, it has different steps here. We kind of changed it up a little bit, but if we just look after we have done this, the predict how the algae on the surface might affect organisms living in the deep waters of the pond. And what I want us to identify is that as that will affect the top part of the pond, it, the sunlight at the bottom is gonna be reduced, photosynthesis will stop, and those, that plant life will start to die off. And the type of algal growth is modeled in this investigation. Logan, can you say it for us? Eutrophication. Eutrophication. Um, and that is the process um, where the algae will start to grow on the surface of the pond and eventually destroy the pond. Um, so once you're done with this, as always, export to your drive. Um, check the homework matrix for any assignments that are due today as well. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know. All right, we will talk to everybody later.